Hello, hello, and welcome to another Rung Rouge unit of the Reek. And today we are taking a look at the Challenger tank available to the 15th Scotch and 6 Airborne Divisions. During the Second World War, the British had this 17 pounder gun. It was rather nice, it was very powerful, it could blow up German tanks very easily. But they wanted to be able to put it into a tank of their own. So they tried it with the Cromwell, it didn't work, the Cromwell was just too small, the turret's too small to really accept the gun. And to remedy this problem, the Brits would come up with two solutions. Solution number one was just to make a smaller version of the gun that's slightly less powerful, and stick it into a Cromwell. This would be known as a Comet, but that wouldn't see service till late 1944. The second solution, the more earlier solution, was just to make a larger turret and fit the same gun inside. And this would be known as a 30 Challenger. To accommodate the larger turret and gun, they would slightly increase the length of the tank and add on some extra suspension. And because of the heavier round, they decided to have two loaders inside the tank instead of just run. You could also fit two guys in there because the turret was bloody massive. The Challenger had come off production line in 1943 but they'd only ever make 200 of them before stopping production. And that's because of two reasons. Number one, the main one, the Sherman was much easier to convert into a 17 pounder tank, as the turret could fit it, it had better armor, and it had more machine guns. Number two, they'd much just prefer using regular Cromwells compared to having a fleet of challengers, because the Cromwell, at this point, they're yeah, starting to introduce 75 millimeter guns like the Sherman had, into the Cromwells, yet had better high explosive capabilities. Even though they were worse in the anti-tank department, having the infantry support with the high explosive ammo was seemed much more of a better design choice. And also, would you want to have a tank with that big of a turret? But nonetheless, the Challenger would end up seeing service during the Normandy campaign and throughout the rest of the war, all the way into the Netherlands and Germany. Initially, Tank commanders didn't like the Challenger because they just saw it as a big bloody target with the turret. But later on, some tank commanders would actually like the Challenger. Because even though the turret was big, it was still a slightly lower profile than the Sherman. And it was still a lightweight tank that had a pretty powerful engine. So it could move up rather fast and keep up with the other Cromwells. In game, the Challenger 2 is a 170 point main O. Uh, wrong game. In game, the Challenger is a 150 point tank available during the B and C phase for 15 Scotch and C phase for the 6 Airborne Division. It has two weapons available to it. So its loadouts consist of one 17 pounder gun, 6 accuracy, 6 rate of fire, 16 AP, 25 shots, 2 HE, 20 HE ammo, and a range of 1.2 kilometers. It's, it's a 17 pounder. It's the most powerful allied tank gun in game, and it's good at blowing up of a tank, so for infantry support, it's pretty pants. And speaking of infantry support, you got a single machine gun. Just just one machine gun, it's not exactly great either. And take a look at the Miss Colonial stats, it's got 7 frontal armor, 5 at side, and 4 at back, and it does have armor on top. It has very bad stealth. A speed of 25 kilometers off road and 70 kilometers on the road and a very low optics capability in battle a challenger is a tank that blows up other tanks and that's all it's really good at tigers and panthers of course will die rather easily king tigers are a bit more of a nuisance of course compared to the firefly you're 60 points cheaper but you do lose out on the armor but honestly i think that's a rather rough for our trade this is only 30 points more in a regular 17 pounder and that 30 points for some armor and maneuverability is a damn good trade-off and of course hc ammunition there isn't exactly the greatest in the decks that you can bring us up here the 15th scotch very useful because you can have the nice one two punch churchill's in front taking all the damage challenges and back dishing out the damage work lovely six airborne also very useful because it's your only heavily armored or heavily armed tank that you can get you know, also heavily armed because you can only get cromwells in the six airborne and so it's useful yeah too they fulfill their role rather nicely in those decks and it really it's, it just blows up other tanks you could put this in the anti-tank section not because of balance but it fulfills the same role as like a wolverine or achilles they're not bringing this out 
to help fight against infantry in towns. You're buying this sucker because there's a tiger that you want dead or plan to force stoked. Whatever the hell you're fighting against. And it does that while looking ugly as hell. I just... It, it looks dumb. Really dumb. But you could say that about a lot of British tank designs in World War II. And with enough rambling, I'm going to shut up and leave it at yeah. This has been another Rangaroos unit of the week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as usual, please just take it easy.